Okay, this is the third uh, installment of the micro lecture series. This is going to be a short one, and it's going to about be about if statements and logic. This is Professor Moreno, and let's dive right in. Okay, if statements. What an if statement is, it is in a, a, a construct to help your programs make decisions. So whenever we're going to have an interactive program that requires user input or, you know, it doesn't even have to be user input. It can be input from another program or input from a function like system dot current time millis. You know, so our program could um, um, be getting an an input from the user or from another program or from a built-in function into Java. And our program, will basically, why we use an if statement is to help our program make a decision based on the value of that you know, input we're getting from the other program or from the Java function or from the user. <coughs> Conceptually, a statement which starts with if in English will start with if in Java. And that's why I always suggest that students who are beginners in programming, whenever they have a task ahead of them, should um, write it out in English first before writing it in Java. Once you write it out, if you write it very detailed step by step in English, um, e you don't even have to be that detailed. You can write broad steps in English and then out of that broad step for example like the first broad step can be read user input and the second broad step can be if user input uh, um, is greater than zero then do this if user input is less than or equal to zero then just you know print out an error message that can be the outline of your program and now that you have that you can write more specific English steps so the first step was that read user input so now you can write more specific English steps like create a scanner, um, print out the, the, the request for the user to type the input, then uh, uh, use the scanner to retrieve the input, you know, and then finally you translate it to Java. But one thing that, um, that is very uh, uh, important of this translation process is that a statement which starts with if in English will start with if in Java. So remember how I said, you know, the, fir the, the, the there were three basic steps to my imaginary application. The first one was get user input. The second one was if user input is greater than zero, then do whatever. And if user input is less than or equal to zero, return an error message. Those two last statements starts with an if. They start with an if. So you bet your, 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 your nuts uh, uh, and bolts that in Java they're going to start with if too. So how's it going to look in Java? If parenthesis user input whatever variable you called it you know greater than zero then there's going to be some code that you execute else there's going to be system the out that print line you made a mistake user try again or something like that. So now what the anatomy uh, and that takes me to my next point the anatomy of an if statement at its most basic level is if then you open a parenthesis then you have a test, a logical test, and we're gonna get more into this in our next slide. So we have our logical test right here, then we close the parenthesis, then we open a brace, and then we have a bunch of lines of code that we want to execute, if it is indeed the case, that this uh, uh, condition is true. In, in this case our condition is x greater than 5, so if, if this is our if statement, you know, what we're going to have is if x greater than 5, then between the braces is a bunch of code that we want to execute whenever x is greater than 5. Or in my previous example, x is greater than 0. So now, now let's talk a, a little bit more about that condition, that thing inside the if statement. Java textbooks call this a condition. In the context of logic, though, it's called a proposition. And, and pr a proposition simply is a statement which has a true or false value, and that is it. There is nothing else. There is no middle ground. It's either true or false. X is greater than 5 is definitely a statement like that. It doesn't matter what X is. It's either greater than 5 or it's not greater than 5. Um, that's it. So uh, for any value of X, it doesn't matter in all the real numbers, imaginary numbers, whatever. It's either greater than 5 or it's not greater than 5. <coughs> okay? And... Uh, uh, so it's... Th th and that means that this whole expression right here x greater than 5 is either true or it's false. That's why it's a proposition. And uh, um, this is what we mean when we talk about stuff like a, like here, come on, like a or b right here. In this proposition, this is a compound proposition that has two propositions inside it. a is a proposition 
and B is a proposition. And this whole thing is also a proposition, A or B. And uh, what logic teaches us is how to decide what the value of this whole proposition, which is highlighted, is depending on the values of A and B. You know, if we can tell whether A is true or false, and whether B is true or false, then we'll be able to tell what the value of this whole proposition, A or B, is depending on the individual truth values of A and B. So again, you know, A and B are both propositions, and they could be something like x less than 5, or x greater than 100, or y less than 0, or whatever you want. What the actual proposition is doesn't matter. You have to think about, think about it like it's algebra, okay? When you learn this little law right here in algebra, A plus B squared is equal to A squared plus 2AB plus B squared. It doesn't matter at all what A is, right? or what B is, right? That's what we're doing here. We're giving you um, general laws, general laws to decide what this is, A or B, regardless of what A and B are. So we could have an example, um, x greater than five, or x greater than zero. Uh, this can be our if condition, x greater than zero, and y greater than zero. You know, that can be your if conditional right there. And what we're teaching you is how to decide what this is, this whole expression, based on this and this. Because that is pretty evident to you, you know, like when, once you're running through the logic of a program, you're going to know what x is. And you're going to know what y is. So you're going to know whether x is greater than 0 and y is greater than 0 or not. So what I'm trying to teach you is this, how to decide whether this is true or not. Being that, let's say that you know that uh, x is not, x is negative 5 and y is 0. So they're both not greater than 0. So this whole thing is going to be false. And that's it. That's what I'm trying to get across to you. That's what these laws are for. Um, now let's d dig a little bit more deeply into the A, uh, uh, into the OR, AND, and NOT. This is how you write OR in Java. A bar bar B. And how you read it out in English is A or B and how you would um an example of how this would look in java is ship state equal five or ship state equal six okay um and when is this true this whole thing that we have highlighted right here is true when the variable ship state is either five or six it doesn't have to th they both don't have to be true at the same time okay now let's look at this one this is and so this is how to write and in Java, A and A, ampersand, ampersand B. This is obviously how to say it in English, A and B. And an example of, you know, something in Java that using this, that would use this, is shift state equals three and name that equals Cletus. So let's say that, you know, our program is deciding whether to include an NRA postcard or not. And and the, the, the state, which is, you know, uh, assigned to the number three, is Tennessee you know so if ship state is 3 means it's Tennessee and the name is Cletus we know that guy for sure is a redneck and we're gonna send him our, an NRA for post postcard right so that's why we use this and this and right here so that our whole expression only evaluates to true when both of them are true okay and that's what I'm saying in this next bullet point right here and finally let's talk about the not not is simply negation so not x or this could be this could just be not a to keep in the nomenclature that, that we've been using not a and this is how you would read it in english and um this is how it would look in java shift state that equals ca okay that would be an example of a not uh, condition you could have an if not shift state that equals california then um, you might do some other checks to, to see if there's a redneck. But if a guy lives in California, it's pretty pretty safe to bet that he's not a redneck, okay? So in this particular case, this whole statement right here is true when the thing inside the knot is false. So in this case right here, this whole statement, not A, is true 
when a is false. Why? Because if a is false, what does the not do? So if a is false, then the not changes it to and inverts it, so it changes it to true, so the whole statement is true. Okay, pretty elementary, not that complicated. You just have to not overthink it, just sort of accept it like a child would. All right, and uh, now we're going to talk, we're going to take a brief uh, tangent and talk about why we're going to, why we learn logic. And there's two main reasons, really. And reason number one is so that you're not a moron. Um, and that I couldn't, I couldn't understate that enough. Uh, or I, I couldn't possibly understate that because really, like, learning the laws of logic enables you to be a better thinker, to make better decisions, to make better arguments, um, to detect fallacious arguments, and, and in short, you know, it just makes you better able to discern what a good argument is versus a bad argument, and, and, and it gives you a good BS detector. It, it it's very, very much, very strongly enhances your BS detector and uh, uh, enables you to think more clearly. And the other main reason the other reason is that while we're learning logic is that we're taking a, jo a Java class and uh, we want to simplify our if statement conditions and, 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 and make them more legible and intuitive. So if you have something like if, and ignore all that code that I have there, so if, um, I don't know, request dot equals response, you know, the request is an object and response is an object and then we have or and then we have, uh, I don't know, uh, IP dot equals um, HW code, and then, so this is in parentheses, uh, and session ID dot equals pass okay so we have a, a compound statement right here we have request that equals response or IP that equals homework code and session ID that equals pass that is actually a simplified statement we could have also written that as um, Here, this or this and like that. I uh, know that's getting off the screen, so let me enter it down. So this could be a compound uh, uh, statement like this, where this is the first part request that equals response response or IP that equals homework code and request that equals response or session ID that equals pass okay and I'm just doing this to getting you used to, to seeing it in Java and seeing the practical application of it so what I'm trying to say is that you can go back and forth between this statement and the one I had before okay which is this one so the two are equivalent and whichever one is going to be more legible is the one that you should use and uh, you know, in many cases, you end up writing a huge if statement conditional, and you can simplify it all the way down to a single line, um, and that's what logic is for—to make your your code um, less error proof, less error prone, uh, more readable, and uh, easier to follow. Okay, and one thing that I do want to clarify a lot is this right here: if statements can have multiple propositions they refer to, so. You can have if, you know, x is greater than zero, or y is greater than zero, or z is greater than zero, or i is greater than zero, or j is greater than zero, or k is greater than zero, and then a, bun a block of code down here that gets executed when any one of those variables is greater than zero. Okay, so you can have a long, long, long list of uh, comp uh, of uh, propositions inside your if condition. Okay, um, now let's go and talk about the De Morgan's laws. This is the interaction between OR and and negation. Okay, De Morgan's laws are simple, uh, especially one, uh, 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 and the way you should go about them is memorize them. 
memorize them and then they will make sense okay it'll be like the multiplication table once you've memorized a multiplication table it makes perfect sense based on addition okay that's the same thing that's the same thing you got to do with the mortgage laws just memorize them and they'll make perfect sense afterwards so what do we have here this expression right here the negation of a and b is equal to this expression right here the negation of a or the negation of b that's the first the morgan law pretty simple not that hard to memorize and the second one is the exact same except you switch the and for or so the negation of a or b is equal to the negation of a and the negation of b okay very simple just memorize those know them and be on the hunt for cases where you have this come up especially in an exam you see or and an and in there you know there's going to be the morgan somewhere so try to apply it okay but when you're coding too when you're coding too <coughs> you see uh you can have examples where you're you're looking for things not to be the same and you have this is what will come up in code mo most frequently right here the the ones on the right hand side are the ones that are going to come up in code most frequently okay not a or not b you know not b and not a and then you can transform that into this and possibly simplify your if conditional by quite a lot and then the final part of this uh, um, micro lecture is going to be the distributive loss and the distributive loss is very similar to the algebraic distributive uh, loss and what we have here is uh, a or b and c and that's equivalent to let's see how a or b and a and c so look how the a acted like uh, the the this um operator which was outside the parenthesis acted like the multiplication because if this is if this were a multiplication the result here would have been a b if this were multiplication this were multiplication and this were addition the result here would have been a b plus a c right so look at uh, what we have here you know a b we're saying you know uh, the or was a multiplication so we have a b and the and was the addition plus and we have a c so it's the exact same thing and um, now let's look at the other one we have okay now the one that's outside the parenthesis is and so that's the one that's going to be a multiplication so it's going to act like like this one is going to act like multiplication the one that's outside the parenthesis is going to act like multiplication and the one that's inside the parenthesis is going to act like addition okay so what does that leave us a b plus a c once again and we said the one outside the multi the the parenthesis was multiplication so let's change it and the one that was inside the parenthesis was addition so let's change it now what does that leave us with exactly what we have over here you see very simple distributed laws are very simple and uh, in in general in programming this right here that I have highlighted or this is uh, what you will encounter okay um, these are the cases that you'll encounter that you will think of intuitively and your job is to make them simpler by doing the reverse distributive so um, let me see if I think of an example here. Let's say that you know, going back to the example where we wanted to do our little um, uh, mailer, we were doing a mailer, and we wanted to send out an NRA postcard to people who we thought were rednecks and would be interested in it. Okay, so this A right here could be name that equals Cletus, and B could be resident residence uh, residence address is in Tennessee. This A again, you know, A has to be the same as, as the A that it was before, so it's name that equals Cletus, and the C is resident state equals Kentucky. Okay? So, what we're saying here is to anybody who's named Cletus or lives in Tennessee, and anybody who's named Cletus or lives in, uh, uh, oh, actually, I should have done it here. Sorry. Um, back with the same uh, definitions. You know, A is name that equals Cletus, B is lives in Tennessee, 
A is named that equals Cletus, C is lives in Kentucky. So anybody who is named Cletus and lives in Tennessee, or if they're named Cletus and live in Kentucky, they're going to get an NRA postcard. So how do we summarize that? Simply saying it like this. If their name is Cletus and they either live in Tennessee or in Kentucky, then they're going to get our postcard. That's it. Simple. You see? So that is it for this lecture. I hope it was constructive and um, it was pretty much improvised. So I apologize for that. But, uh, you know, we're getting close to the start of classes and I did want to have this out before the weekend so you could at least have the chance to have a look at it and not have excuses later for sucking. All right. I hope you had a great winter break. I look forward to seeing all of you and helping you uh, learn to program some cool things. We're going to be doing some awesome things in the, this coming semester with all our graphical properties and we're going to be using uh, uh, internet connections and we're going to be using keyboard inputs and all this stuff. So I hope uh, uh, you come with uh, your big boy pants on and are ready to do some work and get some learning on. Have a good afternoon.